Hi and welcome back to the Jurassic Jungle, the renovation story of a 50 year old bungalow down here in Dorset. Um, so uh, this is an introduction to a series of videos that I'm going to have about our underfloor heating, um, air source and solar installation. Um, we, the property here had a suspended wooden floor. It's been through, as I'll explain, uh, a series of different heating systems from an electric hot air system from the 1970s, a condensing boiler with radiators, um, and now we're replacing that with a fully built underfloor heating system throughout the original part of the property and the new build sections. Um, the original property had a suspended wooden floor, so wooden joists, uh, there was no installation uh, insulation under there. Um, so we've decided to um, remove all of that wooden floor, all of the joists, fill the void with hardcore, then insulate, install, install the underfloor heating pipes, um, and then a screed over the top. So um, certainly the harder way of, of doing it, but what we hope will be um, a better, more efficient installation at the end of the day. So this is a quick intro just to give you a quick tour around um, the bungalow as it is now and the work that I've done to remove the flooring. So you can see the layout of the rooms here now. It's taken me a couple of days to lift all of the flooring. Um, this room had a, um, I'm not sure if it was oak, a sort of certainly a hard work tongue and grooved sort of 50 mil wide plank. So I've saved a bunch of that material that I might use for other projects in the future. Um, you know, this is certainly the hard way of doing it. As you can see, it's quite messy and a lot of work. I've taken all the floor up, all of the joists out, um, all of the plumbing, all of the electrics. Um, we're going to be crushing um, uh, the rubble that we've got from the build. Hopefully uh, later this week we'll have a crusher here and crush all of that down into hardcore to, to fill the voids that we've got across the whole of the bottom of the house. Um, then on top of that um, a, uh, a concrete slab um, and then PIR on top of that before we have the clipped on under floor heating um, and one of the reasons that we decided to change the flooring was we had issues in a couple of the rooms here uh, the kitchen and bathroom where the the floor had visibly dropped and was moving under your feet um, and this house has had several different heating systems it had an electric hot air system from the 70s up till 2017 in 2017 it had a combi boiler with radiators installed and the guy that did that cut a few hatches in the floor, crawled around under the floor, must have been a pretty horrible job, and knocked the pipes through. And I can see, I think, now what has caused those floors falling, um, that you can see uh, down here that he's taken some of the blocks out in, the, in this situation here. Um, the hole to the right is where the air vent was for the hot air system that I've taken out. But the, the joist that was in the middle here in the kitchen was, had no support. There were no blocks under there at all, which would cause the kitchen floor to drop, and it would... It would um, move around under your feet and the last room that i'm doing is the bathroom which the floor was really bad and we've seen why it's uh, a lot worse over there um, so you can see under here uh, that actually two of the joists under the bathroom floor um, had no support on this end so that's actually resulted the bathroom floor was was dished and you could feel it moving around under your feet and i thought it was water damage and it was rotten um, but obviously with that having um, no support um, if I come down here you can see that you know we've got nearly a, an inch drop of the floor so it was cut like this so one, you know one of the reasons that I decided to do the complete removal of the floors um, was because of this this issue um, and I hadn't realized it was just you know, there was just no support so obviously with that that problem is going to go away this is all going to be filled with hardcore um, and a concrete slab so and insulation so a nice solid base that uh, should get rid of those problems um, really pleased to be ripping the bathroom out you know, we've been using this uh, walk-in bath um, <laughs> for the last year while we've been living here so really looking forward to having decent bathrooms back in in uh, in a month or two um, and i'll come back on what we're doing with the underfloor heating as a series of videos as, as this goes through as i get this finished and cleaned up when we do the crushing and put the hardcore in um, when the concrete base goes down insulation and then the installation of the underfloor heating, the control system, air source heat pump. Um, and, and let you know, you know, because I looked at all of the different choices for retrofit underfloor heating and initially really considered the, the choice of insulation between the joists um, and then spreader plates. But obviously, whilst that's less disruptive to install, 
the fact we were moving walls around and we had these issues with a couple of the floors, it seemed to make sense to do the extra work um, to to have a what I felt was a properly designed underfloor heating system. So I'll be coming back, as I say, with a series of updates over the next few weeks. We're hoping that uh, all of the underfloor heating will be in and running over the next four to six weeks, um, but certainly a lot of work to do. And thank you again for all of you that have subscribed and liked the videos that I've done so far. Uh, we're about 140 people that have subscribed, but I've had a couple of thousand views of some of my videos um, that we've put out in the series so far, which is fantastic. So thanks so much for your support and uh, look forward to you um, asking any questions that you have as we go through the build. Uh, please click like and if you haven't subscribed, please think about subscribing to the channel. Thank you.